Welcome to the first session where we are going to talk about writing your own, building your own tool for vulnerability prioritization. Um, and at the back end, we are going to call the Transilians uh, API. So let's first take a look at what we have at Transilian. So if you go on the vulnerability prioritization, you can then go and say try Transilian's vulnerability prioritization, which lands you here. And then you can search by CV, by vendor, by product. So for example, if you have like a bunch of Fortinet firewalls, And you want to know across the various versions of firewalls that you have, what are the kinds of vulnerabilities that you are at risk from? So from the entire history of Fortinet's existence, you can search, you can look at your specific version, and then you can go deeper into that. So for this version, if you have, for example, 7.2.0, you can look at all of the CVs that impact that um, version, and then you can sort by CVSS, by EPSS, and then you can go deeper into each uh, vulnerability. So for example, let's take a more recent vulnerability from Cisco, and uh, if we search for it, um, it should be able to tell us more detail about what this vulnerability is, what versions are affected by it, um, which configurations, do you need any specific configurations for the vulnerability to appear? No. Is there an exploit? What are the exploitation steps? So pretty straightforward exploitation steps. Mitigation most likely is to upgrade to the latest version. And then you can ask it a whole bunch of questions. So. You can, uh, we've pre built a, a lot of questions that you can ask it. It's a rag on top of an LLM. So obviously, you can ask it a whole bunch of questions. Um, but then you can also bring in a lot of environmental context. So if you give us your firewall rules, your EDR asset information, your WAF rules, your security groups, you can bring all of that context in to really identifying the true risk from that specific vulnerability. Now, all of this is also available as a API. So if again, if you go to the Transilience uh, website, if you just go to the main Transilience website uh, and you scroll down, you can actually request for a key. Just enter your email address and get a key. And you can also figure out the APIs Actually, for our purpose today, you don't even have to understand the APIs. Just download the open API uh, specification, and then that's what we're going to use to have our code um, actually work and do the job. So, for example, in this case, we can ask, does my firewall rule block this CV? Uh, analyzing the firewall rules, we can show that it does not. Uh, block this particular CV. There is no specific rule to block access to that port. And therefore, um, again, most likely a WAF will not help. Uh, and uh, any AWS security groups or uh, rules in Azure, whatever we are able to parse, whatever you've given access to. Um, so in this case, 22 traffic is actually allowed in the sample configuration. So. And you can ask it your own questions. You can ask it to write an email to the uh, dev team explaining why this issue needs to be fixed. All of that kind of fancy stuff you can do. But if you want to like build a utility at your end, which only calls the Transilience API to enrich uh, CVs, uh, then uh, let's take a look at uh, this code that we've developed. So uh, I start by saying I want to tackle the problem of vulnerability prioritization. What is the process to do this? I want to see Claude's thinking on this, right? And uh, so Claude actually gives me a pretty comprehensive prioritization framework. It says go discover assets, you know, integrate with the cloud, do network scanning, do manual verification, identify business criticality of the assets, identify sensitivity of the data, uh, and then collect your vulnerabilities from multiple sources, then do normalization, 
and then do prioritization based on that. This is more, we're not doing so much at the code level. This is not code level prioritization. We are prioritizing infra and um, software vulnerabilities, right? In the sense that if you have packages or um, software installed on your servers, desktops, etc. So we're looking at vulnerable software, configuration issues, things like that. Uh, and so, so I like this prioritization framework. And I said so as much to Claude. I said, this is pretty cool. Uh, actually, I said, this is brilliant. And then I said, at Transilience, we build a comprehensive vulnerability and threat database that given a software name can give me the associated CPs and CVs and a lot of enriched information of that CV. There is an API. And as another option, I want to be able to parse a CSV format. How can we build a prototype? So uh, this is something that I have learned over time that you don't go out and build the whole fancy shebang on day one, right? You want to build it stage by stage. So the first thing that we're doing is that it gives me a architecture for it. Actually, I quite like the architecture as well, um, right? A broad level architecture it gave me on what fields it will ingest, et cetera, et cetera. I liked it. And then I said, OK, uh, for the MVP that we are building, this is a pretty good spec. So let's build this. And then I uploaded the. Uh, And I also gave it the key that I have. So I will have this key disabled after this recording. And then it actually went ahead and built a pretty good set of code. And this was one of the first MCPs I was installing. So I struggled through that. Uh, it's a Windows system. It's not uh, a cool Mac system, but anyway. Uh, and it gave me seven tools that will be accessible, uh, as you can see. So there is obviously going to be a bit of struggle. There is code that you didn't like. I wanted to refactor the code. It does that. And finally, I managed to upload content and get output that I uh, actually like. And so here, for example, if you see now, this is the MCP installed. And you can see it, it has the following tools. So it can give me stats for an uploaded file. It can analyze vulnerabilities and then it can do prioritization based on these uh, specs that we agreed upon. And so let's do that. Let's start a new chat. And I'm basically going to tell it um, I am uploading files one set asset list and one is and produce a comprehensive list. Also show it. Okay, now let's see what happens here. We're going to upload these two files. First one is a vulnerability scan output. I've sanitized both the files. Uh, removed uh, IP addresses and uh, host names and usernames or in terms of owners, etc. And this now is going to go through a slightly longish process because it's uh, quite a bit of data. And for every CV, it's actually going to go and fetch transilience information. So it's configured the API with my key, uh, and it will go through a process to now. Uh, give me the uh, output. Uh, it takes a few minutes, but at the end, we should have a pretty cool uh, output. So while it does this, let me actually show you for the exact same data set uh, what the output looks like. So I ran the same analysis uh, earlier today, three hours ago. Okay. Same prompt, same data set. Okay. Same prompt, same key, same data set, go ask it. So, and this is the output that I get, right? It takes a few minutes and then it identifies 437 assets. It gives me 3,800 3, vulnerabilities with 3,170 CVs in that vulnerability data set. Um, it does the CV enrichment using Transilience API, confirms that the API is working correctly. So, and then it gives me the report. And now what I found with the report was that I wanted a little bit more tweaking in the report. 
So I said, give me a before and after comparison of the criticality rating. So how many were critical, high, medium, low before you did all of this jugglery? And what is it now? And then I want to have it as an interactive uh, output. And so it actually creates that very cool uh, vulnerability prioritized dashboard. Uh, shows me the critical vulnerabilities, high, total, unique, uh, etc. And then it gives me a before and after count. So actually um, the criticality rating has gone down from 334 critical to 127. So there is a drop of 62% in critical. Medium has dropped by 18%. And all of a lot of that has shifted into low. Uh, sorry, from critical high, it has shifted to medium and lows. Uh, and so it gives me the graphical distribution. And now I can actually sort by uh, just looking at all the critical vulnerabilities. I can see it as high vulnerabilities. I can sort filter by EPSS. Uh, what are network accessible uh, vulnerabilities, uh, etc. So it's a pretty cool report. And then also, if you see here, uh, this is the criticality rating comparison, right? So this is a more clear picture. So from 334, we are down to 127. Uh, massive reduction in false critical priorities, more focused high uh, priority queue that has also dropped. Um, and some items have moved to medium and low. All of that is so 62% reduction. And this is all because of two critical factors. One is the transilience data set and one is by correlating with asset uh, criticality. And some sample uh, reclassification examples it gives you. So it's further transparently telling you why uh, that reprioritization has happened. So for example, this was a critical vulnerability reprioritized to high uh, because the attack vector is local. The user, the attacker has to be present uh, on the system already. So it already requires initial system access. Exploit prediction is low uh, and therefore you can downgrade it. So this is precisely what we, so Windows privilege, kernel privilege escalation, right? You probably do want to fix it, um, but to to exploited efforts have to have access to the Windows uh, system. Also, it upgrades vulnerabilities. So some were medium, it upgrades them to high. Uh, so that reprioritization has also happened. Um, and uh, you know, uh, DNS security is a big risk, and therefore uh, this is uh, reprioritized as high. So this is the kind of uh, analysis that can happen, and uh, uh, I for one find it pretty uh, useful. Uh, as I said, I will share these prompts and the code with you. So in case you want to install it as um, your own MCP tool. Uh, um, and uh, you know, have fun with it. Um, in the next version, I'm going to try and build uh, firewall parsing ability as well. Uh, and so you can then see the exposure of that asset based on the um, firewall rules. So I hope you found this useful. I hope you'll build uh, interesting tools using Transilience API. Thanks for watching.